This tutorial is going to show off some of the options you have with GameCore's post-processing system. This is just going to show you how to add them and some of the functions dependent on the sliders. I didn't go through everything on the list or every option for each effect. You'll need to do a bit of playing around to find the effects you actually like, but I will expand on the more common ones found in games today. Let's start by opening up a world. I use the world I use for the terrain tutorial series so I could have some height levels to show some of the effects on. You can set up any world to do this tutorial. Go to environments and then down to post processing to open the post processing dialog window. The left side of the window is a list of all the post processing filters and the right is the options for those filters. I'll go ahead and add a blur effect first. So go to add and find the blur.flt effect and click open. The screen is instantly blurred and you can control the amount of blur with the blur slider. I'll add a bloom next. And come on, who doesn't like bloom? So you can control the amount of bloom with the bloom amount slider. To combat my addiction to bloom, I always find the bloom I'm happy with and then scale it back just a little. I'll go ahead and add levels of HDR, which is high dynamic range next. HDR is like a harmonizer for a guitar. It's just taking your main image and doing one overexposure and one underexposure and laying all three versions on top of each other to produce a more dynamic range of color. If there's anything I like more than bloom, it's this. So if you drag the saturation to zero, you get a black and white image. There is a better way to do that if that's your goal. Add the monochrome filter instead. So I'll add a film grain filter next and be careful with the flickering setting. You could give someone an epileptic seizure if you just drag it too high. So I'll go ahead and add a depth of field filter too. This one is very handy. Those of you with photography slash film training know that this controls how close what is in focus and how out of focus everything else is. So play with this often. It very quickly can add some realism to a project. I play around with the fog system in this video as well. So that is a different menu. So go ahead and go to environments and then down to environment and check the enable fog box at the top of the pop out window. It is preset to a black color with a far off distance. Make the end distance much shorter from 2000 to actually about 200. You will have the fog of war. You can change the color of fog from a natural gray to a neon blue if you were so inclined. So go ahead and combine the fog system and a few post processing filters and you can have a very good looking world before you put any objects in it at all. I'll go ahead and show some other filters in the video, but as I said before, to go through every option and every slider would be a waste as it's mostly self-explanatory and completely honestly a question of your own taste. So play often and play hard with your post-processing effects. You'll be pleasantly happy with the results, I assure you. So go ahead and have some fun with these settings.